Hi everyone, welcome to another endgame study. As always in these puzzles, you should pause the video, try to find the solution on your own, and when you're done, unpause it, and we will work out the puzzle together. Alright, so I'm trying to solve it now, and e7, rook e2 is one move. The other idea is pawn to c4. So if he takes the pawn, then e7, rook e2, bishop a6 skewers the king and the rook. So if c4 check, he has a few possibilities. Um, king c6 looks even okay. This is an unfortunate thing. Maybe we're just going for a draw here. I don't know. I'm confused a little bit. Hmm. Rook e7, rook e2. Bishop b7. Wait, doesn't he have to interfere with his... Okay, okay, I'm starting to get, get some ideas here. Um, well, this isn't really even that complicated, right? We just go e7 a weird study. I mean, it's just like a simple thing, because bishop b7, if king c4, bishop a6 wins that rook. If, instead, rook h2, we don't want to move the king because of rook h8, but we can play bishop to h3. And now, after rook e2, we have another nice little geometric move, bishop to g2. Any move here interferes with the rook, and if here, bishop to f1. And last defensive possibility, rook to a4. Um, I think we can just move the king. And then, see, the point is, if we move the king, rook e4, bishop b7 check. King moves, takes, takes, but this is a theoretical win, you just put the bishop on d5. So I think it's that simple. We just play e7 and and there's really no hope. Yep, that was correct. So not, you know, not the most complex puzzle ever. We just play pretty straightforwardly and due to geometry, he just can't stop us from checking him all over the place. Um all right, whatever. Some of these puzzles are really cool and some are just strange. But I'll see you tomorrow with another one. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.